following footage you are about to see is raw, unscripted footage of a paranormal investigation of an alleged haunted location by the Southern Indiana ghost hunters. Any evidence, if any, that is found within this footage is the interpretation of the Southern Indiana ghost hunters that may not be the only explainable reason for such evidence. It's up to the viewer to decide. Good evening, welcome back to SCI. My name is Michael Flickner, and uh, this is the story of SCI. And today we're going to talk about believing stuff to be real. And the more that you do believe it to be real, sometimes you can actually make stuff happen. Like if you go to a haunted location that's reported to be haunted, and maybe nothing has happened there, but somebody had come across that they've heard screams or they've seen figures in the windows or heard knockings on a door and stuff like that. And the more that this story gets out, the more people are going to start to buy into it and it very soon can become haunted. And it's a thought pattern that does it. And we're going to be talking about such things like that today and we're also going to be talking about a tulpa. A tulpa is an image being that somebody has thought up in their mind. They believe that it could be real and they start giving it characteristics and they start talking to other people about it. And the more it becomes known, the more it starts to take on its own personality. Now that had happened to me by accident before up at Waverly Hills and I'm going to tell you a little bit more on that. But first of all, let's talk about the making of a tulpa. Way back in 2008, when I was working up at Waverly Hills, I had an entity that I thought was real, and it started coming across as being real. Now there's a story behind this entity and I'm not supposed to mention its name because it got so strong after a while that it started following me around and every place I would go this thing would show up and somehow or another I guess I gave it a personality by mistake and it started feeding off of that and before long other people that was up there they started witnessing it too and it started talking to them now see a tulpa, once you give it an image and a thought pattern, it tends to build off of that. It will build off that and even though it's not real, it's not ever been born, it's just a thought pattern. It will build off of that and it wants to break free. And it wants to have its own personality. It wants to be its own person. And sometimes that can be harmful and deadly. If you're not careful, it could end up taking your own life. Okay. This tulpa towards me began to become very vindictive. It would follow me home from time to time. There was one time I came home and it was real early in the morning and I was coming into the house and it was dark outside. It was very dark. And I reached for the light to turn it on and before I got to the light I heard something, something big hit the wall right in front of me and I didn't know what it was. So I flipped on the light real quick and I looked around and there was this huge huge rock 
that had been thrown in there after me. Now I know that that was the topa. The topa kept trying to get its revenge on me because it wanted its own form of life. Something I couldn't give it. And I guess its thought was if it took me out that it could come into existence. Maybe even inside of me. And it got to where it hurt a lot of people on my team because it kept interfering with stuff. We would go to different locations, it would show up. We would talk amongst ourselves, it would show up. We would get along. After a meeting, we would get along uh, going home and stuff, it would show up. It caused a bunch of havoc. So you got to be careful with topas. In order to get rid of this thing, we had to do our own little ritual, which I'm not going to go through all the telling you how we did it and everything, because it was very difficult. It took several of them before we got to the point where we could reach it and send it into another dimension. Now I know that sounds strange. It sounds science fiction actually. But that's exactly how it happened. And we were able to get rid of it for months. But the bad thing is, is the name of this Tulpa was significant with me in my past. When I was born, my first name was Tim. And my dad didn't like it. He wanted my name changed, and my name got changed to Michael two weeks later. But this thing took on that first name of mine. Now how that happened, I don't know. I don't know if it was something that came out in my mind and my thought pattern back when this thing was created. But it became a very dangerous individual. And I know I'll never forget it. Now we're going to go on from here on to another haunted location that we did way, way back. And this was before the first Southern Indiana Ghost Hunters. A place called Story, Indiana. On 5-23-09, Cy stayed the night at the Story Inn, located in Brown County, Indiana. We stayed in the famous Blue Lady Room. While there, we got permission from the owners to investigate the property. Story Inn is located inside of the town of Story. Story Inn's most popular apparition is the Blue Lady that is supposed to haunt one of the upstairs rooms of the inn. In this room they keep a blue light lit that is supposed to summon the blue lady. Her identity is unknown. The barn that is located in the back of the inn is supposed to be haunted by a young boy that hung himself there and the Dr. Story house is supposed to be haunted by the doctor himself. Although the Blue Lady and other apparitions did not show themselves and we did not get any readings, she did make herself known in other ways. Later in the evening when we were about to call it a night, my wife got a bad case of vertigo while I was out getting a soda. The vertigo ceased when I returned to the room. Then later that evening, I was awakened several times with the feeling that my whole body was on fire. And no matter how much I turned up the air in the room, it felt as I was over a hundred degrees. No one else felt the heat and it all ceased at around four o'clock when I made the statement, I do not know 
who you are, but enough is enough. Nothing more happened this evening. I believe that the story could be possibly haunted, but it would warrant another investigation. Someday I would like to return to the ghost town of story and stay at the inn again. Even though it is a pretty cool story and not much happened there while we was there, but I do feel that we witnessed something in that room with the blue lady. Well, that brings back a lot of memories. That was one of the many first places that we investigated the story end. And even though not a whole lot happened there, but there was feelings that came over me and it, it was it was very strange. It's an interesting little place to go visit. It's in the middle of nowhere and like I said it is called a story end. And I thank you for being with us again today. Thank you very much and sticking with the story of Sai. And this is me saying I'll see you the next time.